So you saw in the last video a taken delivery of this uni hiker. So it's a single board computer with a touch screen. It's got quite a few different other interfaces and uh, sensors on it. In the previous video you saw it got these two up and down buttons there for the controls and it had a touch screen. You can see that it's got a hotspot and it's got this type C port here. The USB lead actually presents as 10 one two three we've got wirelesses as well which is pretty good so it's got wi-fi in it i'm sure it's got bluetooth it might have i'm not checked that it's got a microphone you see there that's a light sensor and looking on the back of it you see it's got a couple of telltale leds there's a lead marked l which is attached to one of the pins these two are i squared c connectors uh, each of these connectors, Grove style connectors, they've got the plus and minus and one of the pins. So pin 21, 22, 23, 24. One thing I didn't notice before, it's got a mini SD slot that might be useful for storing data if this is a remote sensor somewhere. They've got a little buzzer there, it's quite quiet, that little thing is. Then it's got a, a USB and it's got this micro bit thing on the bottom as well. Now it's interesting on the website, these guys are saying that this is a Raspberry Pi re replacement. Now I'm not sure whether it is or not. It's different from a Raspberry Pi. You don't need an SD card to boot it. And what they're saying is it's very quick to start using it. You don't need an external monitor or anything else. Of course, you do need one of these though. You need something to connect it to. All right, so let's try programming this thing then. So this is Mind. It's the IDE that it comes with. I was reading somewhere and it says, I think that this starts up in Debian, uh, but then moves on to something else. I've not been able to get inside this yet. At the moment, I'm just looking at some of the demo code that you get with it and trying to see what I can do to utilize some of the functions of this. So that's loaded now. So back on the screen to connect to it, if I go to terminal, when you click on terminal there, you get this thing at the top. So I'll connect to it like this. And because this is connecting over the wire, I think, yeah, that's great. So that's actually connected to it now. So let's get rid of those. So I've created a new file on one of the tutorials, which is on the barcode that there's, it shows on the screen. There's this thing which uses the GUI and draws some things on it. So uh, I'll copy that code in. Now, theoretically, that document goes through all the various bits and bobs of it and what each bit does. So I won't explain that here, but let's just try and run it and see what happens. All right. So it uploads and goes to there. But yeah, I've got a syntax error. OK, just like funny. Now, when I first did this, I realized it's because this has got some weird characters in. It says there's a funny character there in front of that. So I think there's a blank character. See those spaces there. So maybe it's like Unicode or a different type of space. Let me grab all of those and I'm going to go and use something else. I think I'll use brackets and paste that in there. And if I it said that there was an issue with that one. So if I copy that and do find and replace. So I replace whatever that is and I'm going to replace it with I don't know. Let's replace it with a funny character to start with. I'll replace it with that. So replace all. OK. And then I'm going to replace that character and replace that with a space. Place all. OK. And let's try and paste that in and see whether that gets rid of that first issue. So let's try running that again. So it seems to have worked. So hello, UniHiker. So some interesting things on the screen here. Obviously, there's all these characters. It's easy enough to change those. So let's just change this to Richard. Richard of York gave doing the rainbow. Gave what? Gave cyan in. Where's indigo? Blue and purple. All right, let's try that again. Excellent. It's this funny thing down the bottom. That appears to be a smiley. Look, it's got its own emoji things. That's the wink emoji, but it's made up of other things. In, in, interesting. Let's get rid of that line. So there's some libraries that come with this. So one of the things that I want to do is, let's say, access the little LED at the back. So we've got these two LEDs there, but there's another blue LED which you can access directly. I create a LED and I set that to pin. So pin, then I have to do pin again, P25, which must be a constant. Same as on MicroPython, really. I set it to pin out 
and then I do a digital write on that. So LED write digital, and then I write a number to it. So number one, maybe, hopefully, number one will turn it on. All right, so it's not going to be doing that in the loop. It's going to just do that when it comes on. So hopefully when I run this now, if I've got the syntax right, we should see blue light on the back there. So let's stop what was running and rerun it. Ah, pin is not defined. OK, right, so we've got to load the pin module in. So this one at the top, so there's a Unihiker library and there's a time library. So let's do it from PinPong. So PinPong is the library. I'm not sure whether this is a, a standard Python library or it's just an Arduino library or it's for this specifically. But anyway, it's called PinPong. From PinPong board, import board and pin. So let's run that, see whether that works. OK, it's still saying pin is undefined done pin with capitals down there right okay so let's put pin with a p there let's try that that should be better i think is that going to turn on not yet okay non-type object has no attribute res there's just a little bit else i've got to do i think i've got to start this board up so board so this gives you access to the library and gives you access to the io so board dot begin so let's run that Ah, right. So you see something different happened on the screen now. This has actually opened up this little Python library, this pin pong. Yeah, it does say it's designed by DF Robot, so it's theirs. And you see I've got my little blue light lit up there, so that's excellent. That blue light, as I've set this up, is connected to pin 25. So I don't think you can access that pin any other way other than that LED. It might be available on some of these down the bottom. But then all of these other pins, 21, 22, 23, 24, and then that LED is 25. So you've maybe not got access to a load of I.O., even though it says there's 30 digital pins and 30 analog pins in this. Maybe you can get to it. I don't know. So what I'd like to do, because this is a touch screen, put something on here, which I can press that turns that on and off. Because I've got all of these on already, that's half of the work done. So this is actually accessing the screen. The screen, that GUI module at the top, has got lots of this in already. So let's access this GUI a little bit more. If we go to, on the Unihike library here, if we go to basic widgets, we've got a button here. This is the button code. So let's copy that and go back into Mind after the silly messages actually hello uni hiker i'm going to change that to and hopefully i can just run this and it's going to be as simple as that it's got a button on the text there it is button so i'm going to change that to click me now notice that over here it's got a lambda so this is Lambda, this little procedure that it runs when it's clicked. Now we've got this looping bit down here, but this runs independently. As soon as this is clicked, it runs what's ever after there, which should print the message out, hopefully down the bottom of the screen to say button clicked. OK, so stop that, run it again. Look at the button and I'm going to push click me and. Absolutely nothing happens. Yeah, OK, so at the end of it, it's got state disabled. So let's change that to enabled and try again. It makes sense. The button didn't look like it was enabled. So is this a better version? Ah, now it's not greyed out. So click me. Yes. And button clicked has arrived at the bottom of the screen. How can we get it to change the LED at the back? Let's change this to call something other than print create a procedure or a routine whatever it's called i'm going to create something called clicked all right so here after we've set this stuff in fact i'm going to use this well, we can keep that led definition in really that should be at the top let's move this down the bottom so i'm going to put clicked down here so define clicked colon and print again let's check that that still works so run that uh, click me yeah and it's coming up as clicked now when it's clicked this time i want to take this led and change that to digital one stop that and now run it so at this point we should have no blue led on but when i do click me the blue leds come on 
OK, so let's successfully use some of the Python libraries and some simple code to get this blue LED on the back to turn on when I press the click me button. But that's not very useful on its own. So what I want to do next is utilize some of these external pins and use that to program one of these, the NeoPixel. So if you want to see how I do that, why don't you subscribe to me to make sure you don't miss the next video. Bye.